At the start of the First World War, the countries involved believed it would only last for several months and they'd all be home for Christmas. But the ruthless killing power of artillery and machine guns drastically extended that timeline. The First World War was rather unique because what you had was two armies of almost equal strength and the whole battle came to a standstill. And what this did for the very first time in historical warfare, really, is it caused two armies to dig in. And so it became very important to understand what was going on behind enemy lines. With the Allied and German trenches stretching almost 700 kilometers from the English Channel to Switzerland, there seemed no possible way to gather information over and behind enemy lines enter a century-defining invention that had appeared in the skies a little more than a decade earlier. The Wright brothers were the first ones to really demonstrate controlled heavier-than-air flight. That was in 1903. That is really only 11 years before the outbreak of the First World War, and there was very little understanding or interest of the value of aircraft and how they might um, play a pivotal role in military operations. The primary role of aircraft, and this is often forgotten in, in the way in which the, the First World War air war is viewed by many, uh, is not the knights of the sky and your red barons and so on and so forth. The primary role of aircraft when they're first brought in is for reconnaissance. Flying steady and straight, millions of aerial photographs were taken, providing a bird's eye view of the enemy never seen before in war. You need to know where things are, where the enemy is developing their trenches and their fortifications, and where your troops are. And I can't stress that enough. Early reconnaissance missions used single-seat biplanes that were not armed. Things change when they start mounting machine guns on aircraft. And once you have that, you have a high-firing weapon, which gives you a much greater chance of hitting a target. So now we have reconnaissance aircraft that are being very serious about trying to remove each other from the sky. Very few airplanes were being brought down in this manner. So the next step in the evolution was to design scout or fighter aircraft whose primary purpose was to remove the reconnaissance aircraft of the other side out of the sky. And soon the fighter aircraft started to engage one another. And this is where you have the evolution of the dogfight. World War I air combat was often fought at very short distances, so you could see the individual. You could see the bullets hitting the enemy aircraft. You could see the wounds inflicted on the enemy pilot. You could see the enemy pilot in a plane on fire crashing to the ground. Just as the capability of aircraft were evolving, so were the tactics for shooting them down. There were lone wolves like Billy Bishop, who would often swoop down with the sun at his back, attacking the enemy. But for the majority of pilots, there was greater strength in numbers. Most individuals, though, would have fought as members of a team, whether it was a group or whether it was two individuals. Warrior Brown had a policy that when he brought a new individual into his unit, he would get them to hang back during the first couple of times that they were in combat so that they could observe, because he knew that new people, people who didn't learn the skills of looking around and never flying in a straight line, were basically easy meat for the enemy. Flying in the First World War had a special appeal unlike anything we can imagine today. The closest thing, is probably being on board the first manned mission going to Mars, or playing the newest virtual reality video game. For young people, there's always been a powerful desire to try things that are new. The air war was the complete opposite of the static war on the ground. It was mobile. It was fast. It was new. It was exciting. And more than 100 years later, fighter aircraft continue to captivate and remain a powerful weapon of war.